With me now as a representative to talk about the Animationist Film Festival. It's the fourth edition, but fifth year, we'll go into details. Mm -hmm. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell me about the festival? Uh, my name is Matt Kasnick. I'm the director of the Animationist Film Festival, so just really happy to be here. Um, yeah, this is our fourth edition. So the festival was founded in 2017, uh, the purpose of which is just uh, the, the celebration of animation as a cinematic art form, something that is... Uh, you know, e equally significant to any live action. Uh, you know, I think it's a pet peeve of a lot of big animation fans when people are talking about the great films of the year and they'll say something like, uh, oh, that's one of the best animated films of the year when it's actually one of the best films of the year. So that's kind of the, 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 the mission of the festival is in its name, animation is film. Uh, and so it's a weekend long showcase of the, the best uh, titles from around the world over the course of a single weekend in Hollywood. Nice. Now we're on day two of three. How has the fest been going? It's great. I mean, I was. I think there was a, a lot of questions about whether or not people were feeling comfortable to come back. So, you know, we were sort of on pins and needles going into Friday with uh, Summer of the Gods, which was opening night, and then it was packed. So clearly um, there's a very, very, you know, rabid animation uh, fandom here in Los Angeles, and they came out in full force yesterday. So we're really excited about it. And it, it looks like it's a bit of a hybrid model as well as, because there's some online access to. Tell me about choosing it to do in-person and hybrid. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think that a lot of times if you're, if you're showing films, I mean, that's going to be at the discretion of, you know, the studio or the sales agent, however they want to do it. I think that really what we were pushing for this year is, you know, we wanted to, we felt that the community was ready for, you know, an in-person event mm -hmm. and to do something. Um, so most of the feature films, all, the entire competition section is all in person. Uh, so a lot of the virtual programs that we have are kind of more supplementary things. So we had, um, you know, this is the 30th anniversary of Beauty and the Beast. So we put together a panel of, you know, the directors and the original animators. And so they just got on a Zoom call and just were, you know, swapping old war stories about the production of that film. And so a lot of the panels and things are existing online. So it's just a nice supplement to the, to the in-person programming. Did you notice any particular themes that arose this year with the selection of films? You know, that's a great question. You know, we, we did. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of funny because you don't, we, when you're putting together a, a festival programmatically, you're not looking for anything specific. And then things just kind of pop up. And it was, you know, these are films that were made over, you know, many years. And we're, we're finding there's a lot of refugee stories that are coming across. I mean, so the, the closing night film, uh, which is Flea, which uh, Neon is releasing, you know, that, that had world premiered at Sundance and it played in Cannes and Telluride. Uh, and then uh, Ari Fullman's Where is Anne Frank, which played this afternoon, and um, um, or, or the Spanish-French film um, Joseph. So th there's a lot of films that were really just kind of talking about the, you know, the, the, the refugee experience and the immigrant experience um, all around the world. The Crossing is another one, which is playing tonight, uh, and it's one of the best films of the year, and people should come out and see it. Now, if people want more information, where should they go? Um, animationistfilm.com. Um, you have the entire lineup is there, so you can you can purchase your tickets and you can come down. Um, and then we'll also have a complete list of the, the virtual programming that exists. So that's that's the place to go. And is there anything else you'd like to add about the festival, your personal experience thus far, anything? No, we're just really excited to be back. I mean, we wouldn't be able to do this without, you know, the support of all of our, you know, all of the animation studios and our industry partners. I mean, this is... This is a thing that everybody wants, um, and so we, we just feel that support from everybody. And we also wouldn't be able to do it if there wasn't a demand for people to come to the theater. But it's just it's a great festive environment. We've got some filmmakers in town doing Q and A's. There's this absolutely gorgeous Leica exhibit that's happening in the lobby right now, um, where Leica has you know all of the original puppets from their films, um, and just the level of detail is just absolutely extraordinary, and just needs to be seen to be believed. And it's here, and then come here and then see a movie while you're in while you're in the lobby. Well, congratulations and thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm Carrie Lane with Fanversation.